So really been starting to use the room a lot. We watch Star Wars, uh, A New Hope. I watch it with my son and my daughter. I'd already been through a couple of the first original trilogy and such with my daughter, but my son's ready for him too, so we kind of rolled back since we'd only made it through a few films and started that. And I'm getting very, very acquainted with the Ready Player One racing demo. As I've been swapping in the Harbottle sub, swapping back in the Arundel subs, and kind of experimenting with a bunch of calibrations, and experimenting with the Arc Genesis curves, playing with the parametric EQ in the Arundel mobile app, I want to show that off in some more detail and go into that in a little longer form. I really feel like kind of Anthem Arc really kind of like cuts the bass off a bit too much if you just take the stock Cal. So I really want to add some more deep bass boost and figure out how to capture more of that rumble, more of that feel of the content and of the movie uh, without going too much. One of the things I've kind of discovered as I've been playing with subwoofers in my space is definitely the limitation that my room wasn't built as a home theater. It doesn't have the structural integrity that a engineered and dedicated space with maybe multiple layers of drywall and making sure to get the HVAC out of the way. I've got that soffit that runs through the back of the room and that soffit basically contains a bunch of duct work and we could really feel it. If I turn these, if I turn these subs up and I really hit a tone that doesn't have a lot of other volume or, or noise kind of in the scene, just that rumble, man, I can set that, that back duct going crazy. It's just like metal, sheet metal, just rippling and banging. So I think there's definitely going to be, for me, a limit of, a limit of volume and a limit of bass potential that I hit in my space, and I don't really need to, to exceed that. We'll see what that actual limit really ends up being and how maybe using the right kind of equalization and such, I can get as much actually out of the bass as I can before getting into too much of a room mode excitement and to the point where it's it's really not good and it's, you know, the, the ramifications in the space are, are taking me out of the content. So a whole lot more to kind of figure out and experiment with and learn and tinker and tweak but in the meantime, something came in. Let's take a look at it. So this is the 2A panel from GIK. I've ordered, I ordered two of these back a few weeks ago and it took about six, six weeks or so to get them. These are the ones that were meant to cover up the blemishes above my rear surrounds on that back wall where the former wall mount brackets for my rear heights had been mounted. So these came pretty well packaged, little, a cardboard divider, good size box, wood on the inside, foam on the outside to protect the wood in these in these baggies. I pulled one out and I have to say I'm a little mixed on what I would consider to be a couple elements of it, the quality quality control. And I I noted this on some of my other panels. I really like GIK. I think they make some really nice stuff. I think they have a lot of variety in their offerings. But unfortunately, I think I think there's room for some quality control improvement. So a couple things about this panel. It's basically foam, two inch or so of foam with whatever that is, a quarter inch of uh, wood diffuser. And for the back wall, I did go with just the one dimensional diffusers. For the ceiling, I did the two dimensional patterns. But there's a couple things about this. So if I look at how they made this, there's, it's, the wood just isn't on very flush. There's there's a bit of an overhang on the front That's not on the other side So the panel the wood panel itself just isn't very uh, Evenly spaced on the foam. I mean it covers the foam and they used I Think they just hot glue this on and so there was a bunch of like hot glue debris kind of around some of the foam edges and I hear some right there that you kind of have to clean up and peel off. And this corner right here, this is the worst one. This one's almost flush to the foam. Almost flush to the foam where the other one, the other ones have these, these overhangs. You can see on my finger where I'm pushing on it, finger turns white. And then the other thing is you, they do the cover. You can get this in different colors and finishes. So they paint it black. And I would presume you would think, right, you get black because you want a fully black panel. Well, they don't paint the edge. And they don't spray 
the inside. This is like some real fiberboard or something kind of thing, but you would think before this panel gets hot glued on there, if this was sprayed, it would be painted after, and it would be painted in a way that those grooves would be painted on the inside. So you can see from the side, right, all of the light brown, they're not, they're not painted. So it's almost like they have these bigger boards, right? They have these bigger boards and they cut the squares out, or, or they maybe they paint the big board and then they cut the square out and then they cut the interior out. I, I don't know, I just, or maybe they just roll over it, I'm not sure what it is. And there's also, this one is blemished as well. It came out of the box with this corner kind of chunked right here. And the foam itself, let's see if I can get that in focus, the foam itself is kind of chunked. I haven't pulled the other one out yet, it's still in the box. I need to take that one out and take a look at it. But I have to say a little disappointed or whatever in the quality control. The foam feels nice, it's nice, thick, dense. I'm gonna to push too hard on it to deform it. And one of the reasons that I kind of wanted these is just the simplicity of putting it on the wall. I can use that same spray adhesive probably. I think I would just stick to this same 3M Super 77. That's not going to eat this foam like it would like it would have eaten the styrofoam of the grid fusers. I don't know. I guess once it's up on the wall, the the alignment of the foam panel won't really be a concern. And if I put on the ceiling particularly if I put mul multiples of these right directly abutted together, you know, they'll be they'll be fine as well. These will be individuals on the back wall. But you can definitely see that corner blemish from the front. So at a minimum, I'm going to have to hit that with a little bit of paint or a magic marker. Probably put that one uh, like into the upper corner or put that side up on the back wall. And it'll be up under the soffit in the dark overhang. So I don't think you're really going to notice it. But I'm actually contemplating taping off the sides of the foam around here and respraying this myself and that would allow me to basically spray around the edges to get that black I'd use that that matte black uh, paint that I had I had shown I used for a bunch of things in one of the earlier videos and I could go ahead and, and very easily spray into these grooves and paint the interiors but then I don't know am I really going to want to do that for all of the the two-dimensional ones as well and if I do that, it's going to paint the foam. Conceivably, that shouldn't really matter if a little bit of spray hits this foam. And this is glued on there. Like, this isn't coming off. I don't think this foam is coming off without probably tearing it up and wrecking it. And 50 bucks a panel or whatever. I'm not really interested in, in, in tearing it up. Or if I wanted to make my own, I would have made my own. It might even almost be better if like this wood came unpainted and unattached in a way so they sold you the foam and the panel and then you could paint potentially the what you wanted to paint it and then glue or hot glue or stick it on on yourself so pull out a little bit just to get kind of the whole view so I don't know I like the panel but I'm kind of disappointed at the same time um, about the unpainted grooves and a little bit of the quality control. You could argue that it's got a little bit of like that black brown look, but honestly, I think it just looks unfinished. I'm st I, I still am happier, particularly for the ceiling. I'm glad I bought these over the grid fusers. I know a couple of folks have commented on some of the recent vlogs where I was maybe questioning my commitment to painting the grid fusers um, and a couple of actual grid fuser owners chimed in and kind of corroborated my fear that it, it's a bit of a pain uh, quite a bit of work and so on so I'm, um, I am glad I sent those back but this is what we have instead and then lastly I am still trying to finalize the, my next order for Kaleidoscape pretty much decided on the Strato C player and a compact Terra 12 terabyte so working to get that ordered hopefully get that all set within the next couple of days here and I don't know if I'll have it within the week best case maybe maybe next week and I have been experimenting more I'm in the middle uh, it, it, as I'm releasing videos you'll see I am in the middle of, of tinkering more with 
physical media and the DIY ripping and the server and the OPPO and some of the ramifications of ISOs and make MKVs and, and getting reacquainted with, with making MKVs. So I'm going to definitely do some deep, deeper content, separate video on that. Playing with Infuse again on my Apple TV and just a whole bunch of different stuff. So it's, I'd say it's marginally fun. It's definitely a little more time consuming again, and I can feel that. Um, so we'll see how that works out and what maybe I keep or don't keep in the long run there after kind of getting the content out around it that I'm looking to make. So I just had to make the rounds on the 242 panels hanging on the walls after putting the 2A panels up. I was looking at it and I thought, man, that looks a little bit cockeyed. And so I grabbed the level and or sure enough, the two in the back and less so the couple in the front were way, way off level. The only thing I can figure, subwoofer testing, subwoofer testing literally knocked the, uh, knocked the hanging wall panels here <laughs> out of level alignment. Definitely had some bass power in the room here. I definitely had that soffit rocking. Again, there's all kinds of just sheet metal HVAC ductwork up there, and that, that stuff was just rattling to no end. So there's the 2A foam absorption diffusion panels up. I did them as mirror images of each other, again, trying to keep the room somewhat symmetrical. Um, I won't notice that the one on the left is a little closer to the curtain than the one on the right if you don't. So don't worry about calling attention to that in the comments. I've already, already expressed my displeasure with myself about not making the curtain perfectly symmetrical when I did it. Instead, I thought about covering the door and not, not the remainder, but it, it's only off by a little bit. I think they look nice. They look fine. I'm not gonna go ahead and, and worry about painting the interior uh, thickness. And this is with full lights on anyway. So normally, this is going to get real hard for the camera to resolve, but normally we're down here, and you, you can't even tell. They just look black. They look good. Definitely better than the holes. I'm sitting nice above those speakers, and again, uh, I won't notice that the, the left speaker is a little kind of centered under the panel versus the right speaker. I did hang the panels to be... Uh, equidistant from the sidewalls and the drywall channels just didn't work in my favor to have the speakers exactly equidistant from the sidewalls relative to the curtain yeah so that back wall it has it has its problem but honestly if that's the worst part of my room is the is some of the base symmetry of the back wall uh, I'm pretty happy I'm doing pretty good I think so there we go